I learned data science, machine learning, and AI back in 2014 when it was not even a buzzword. But when I think about today, like how someone can learn data science, machine learning, and AI if they are planning to build their career, this is the recommended plan I would give you for becoming a data scientist and AI expert in 2024. So let's get started. Subscribe to our channel for more content related to Python, data science, machine learning, and AI. So to start with. what i always recommend to everyone is like if you want to get into this field you should start by learning python because python is the most prominent language used by data scientists as well as ai experts so even if you look the generative ai apis of open ai which are available today you can consume those using python so always start by learning python because that would give you confidence in terms of like switching your career into data science so you can start by learning python variables and data types then how you can write loops and conditions then various data structures in python like dictionaries and list those two are really important you can also learn sets and tuples as well but dictionaries and list those are really important data structures which are needed in python then you should also focus on learning pandas and numpy libraries because those are one of the most prominent libraries which you need when you work on machine learning models so focus on learning those as well and don't forget to learn object oriented programming within python because when you are using any libraries or any modules you are using object oriented programming so that's why it's important to know the basic concepts of object oriented programming and along with that in python you have various libraries of creating data visualization so for example libraries like matplotlib cborn you should learn those as well so if you learn this much python you would have a very good background or very good solid foundation when you switch to statistics and machine learning So that's why learning Python first is really really important and I always recommend that as a first step in your journey of becoming data scientist. Then the next thing that you should do is you should focus on learning mathematics for data science. So don't jump into machine learning directly. First of all you start with Python, then you go to mathematics for data science because that would give you solid foundation in terms of the basic maths that is needed. to become a data scientist again here the goal shouldn't be you have to become a mathematician the goal is to understand just the basics of maths that would help you to understand the algorithms so you can start by understanding probability then scalars and vectors then the matrix operations those are also really important for some machine learning algorithms then you should also understand various distance matrix and which one is good for various types of data types and then the differentiation operation in mathematics which is useful with respect to the cost functions and optimizations so these basic mathematical concepts you should try to understand before we jump to the machine learning so this is the second part that i would recommend you after you do this then you can go to statistics because statistics is like a foundation of overall machine learning so in statistics you should cover data distribution then how to measure mean median and mode then you should also understand correlation and causation and what's the difference between that because that would really help you in univariate analysis then the concepts of outlier detection and hypothesis testing those are really important as well in hypothesis testing at least learn chi square test and t test because that would help you to work on categorical data as well as numerical data so this is how you should give good time to learning statistics as well so right now then you would be ready with python mathematics and statistics so this will be a good foundation and only then you can switch to machine learning so make sure that you are spending at least one month in learning python basic maths and statistics before you switch to machine learning now when you go to machine learning in machine learning there are supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms so within supervised you have regression algorithms and classification algorithms so here you can start with linear regression then logistic regression you can also focus on learning support vector machine random forest decision trees then don't forget xgboost as well because that is one of the most prominent used model at the moment in the industry so focus on learning supervised learning and along with that also learn unsupervised learning so in unsupervised learning you would be mainly learning the clustering methods so clustering methods like k means clustering agglomerative clustering db scan and also focus on dimension reduction technologies because sometimes in industry you get really high dimensional data and uh, you might have to reduce the dimension of that data by also keeping the information intact so in that case the dimension reduction technologies like pca and svd those are really really useful so make sure that you also learn basics of those technologies and one of the important thing that i would recommend you is like when you are learning machine learning 
don't learn just theory so for example if you learn linear regression model the next step that you should do is take a data set and build a linear regression model in python on that data set and only then you move to the next model if you do that by the time you finish your learning machine learning right you would have built 10 to 15 projects just on machine learning and that's how you would get very good confidence and very good idea about every machine learning algorithm because this is the one of the mistake that I have seen most of the people do is that they focus on learning theory and then they think that at the end they would build the projects that is not the right approach after learning every machine learning model you should go ahead and build the project in python on any open source data set because that's the only way in which you are going to get in-depth understanding of any algorithm and how you can actually use it in python so in machine learning, ideally you would have to spend around two months to cover all the algorithms. So that's what I would recommend. And after you learn machine learning and build the algorithms on every concept or every algorithm that you have learned, then you can move on and learn deep learning because deep learning is really, really powerful. And when you think of the latest models like generative AI models, right? The deep learning is basically, I would say the backbone of those models as well. So learning deep learning is really important. And specifically in text data, image data, the deep learning algorithms perform much, much better as compared to the traditional machine learning algorithms. So in deep learning, you can cover neural networks, then you can discuss and try to learn about how you can architecture various deep learning approaches. And then you can focus on CNN and LSTM as well. So CNN would help you in terms of how you can work on image data and LSTM is useful because that would help you to understand how you can work on time series data. So in deep learning, spend around three to four weeks in learning all these concepts. And again, in this, the same recommendation, whenever you learn CNN or LSTM, after learning, go ahead and take a new data set and try to build your own model on that data set. And that's the only way in which you are going to get confidence. So after you have finished deep learning, the next thing that you can do is natural language processing. Because when you work in the industry, I would tell you in most of the companies right now, the text data is getting generated. So in your overall study plan of becoming data scientist, you cannot ig ignore natural language processing. So make sure that you are focusing on natural language processing as well. So after deep learning, you move to NLP. The reason for moving to NLP after deep learning is that Within NLP, when you think of some models like word to wet model or fast text model, those models are also built on the concepts of neural networks. So that's why it is really important to focus on deep learning first and only then you move to the NLP section. In NLP, go through all the approaches of text cleaning, then how you can extract features from data. For example, count vectorizer, TF-IDF vectorizer, learn about those. Then learn about the name entity recognition because I have seen that in many industries, the use cases based on name entity recognition are increasing more and more. So that's why this concept is also important. And again, in this, when you go through the NLP concepts, right, take a new data set and on that data set, build a traditional feature engineering approach like count vectorizer and TF-IDF and also try to build a more advanced approach like word to wake or fast text. And by doing that, if you build a classification or a regression model on top of that text data, right? Again, you would get that confidence that you are able to work on NLP or text data on your own. Because as I mentioned, in most of the industries, when you actually land a role or even during the interviews, you would be asked questions around NLP because text data is getting generated in high and high amount. That's why these concepts are really important. After you have covered deep learning and NLP, then you can start with generative AI because now by now you have very good foundation. You already know Python, machine learning, deep learning and NLP. Then you can start with generative AI. In generative AI, you can start with the BERT model because this was the most prominent model. I would say this was the first model which really gave good outputs with respect to generative AI. It might not be as known as ChatGPT, but most of the data scientists do know this model. So start with basic understanding of BERT and how it was different from the previous models. Then understand the concepts of transformers, then go through chat GPT, think about what kind of architecture chat GPT has used, what kind of data sets chat GPT has used to train the model. So go through all these details, at least on a high level, so that you understand more than maybe people who are just using chat GPT, right? Because here the goal is you want to become data science and AI expert. So you have to get into a bit more in detail. Then also go through how you can train large language model on your own data set. So you can try to create question and answer applications using large language model on your own data set. If you don't know how to do that, you can check my video. So in generative AI, I would definitely recommend you to spend at least two to four weeks because generative AI is becoming really a hot topic in the industry at the moment. And in many openings or many roles related to data, data science, I see that 
companies are advertising that basic knowledge of generative ai is useful or having some experience in generative ai is useful right so if you want to stand out in the job market generative ai would definitely help you because i see that not many people have started learning generative ai but if you want to become data scientist or ai expert in 2024 you cannot ignore generative ai so you have to focus on generative ai as well but only thing is don't start with generative ai go to it only when you go through the remaining concepts for clearing your fundamentals for data science and machine learning after you are through generative ai right the next thing is like when you work in the industry and build any model you have to deploy that model as well right because we don't want our models to stay in poc we want our models getting used by the industry and creating that business value and that's where the concepts of ml ops are really important so here you can go through how you can structure your code for deployment then how basically you can have the deployment in the form of batch script or api then you can also go through basics of docker and some cloud platform like aws because this would prepare you well in terms of deployment of your machine learning model so going through these basic concepts is really important because at the end we want to create that business value by deploying our machine learning models so spend at least couple of weeks on ml ops concepts after that when you want to become a data scientist right most of the time you would get data in some kind of a database or a data lake right from where you have to fetch the data and do the analysis so there are various technologies used in this so it might not be possible to learn all of those right when you are trying to become a data scientist so in your roadmap i would recommend you to at least learn sql and that would take care of most of the things so spend good time in learning sql various kind of problem statements or various kind of sql queries that can be written how you can filter or sort the data how you can do data aggregation how you can join multiple tables and write nested queries so go through all these concepts and spend at least a week or two in learning sql because that would give you really good confidence in terms of working in the industry and sql is also one of the part which is asked in the interviews so when you go for data science interviews right in programming usually people ask python and bit of sql so that's why also sql is really really important so make sure that you're spending time on learning sql as well in your overall roadmap in becoming data scientist and the last thing now you have learned all the concepts you have built projects while learning everything right the last thing now you have to do is completely focus on building your profile and interview preparation so over here when you work on the capstone projects right you have to make sure that the projects on which you are working are really industry relevant so your data sets should be really large for example millions of rows should be there in your data set then the problem statement should be relevant to the industry so the relevant problem statement can be credit card default prediction or it can be identifying the top things based on the text data of customer issues so those kind of problem statements are relevant or insurance price prediction but on large data set you have to make sure that the data sets on which you are working are large don't work on data sets which have 10000 15000 rows at least with respect to capstone projects so when you are learning when you are going through machine learning model and then building something on a new data set that time it is okay because that time your focus is more on learning that model learning that concept and not on working on a huge data right but when you work on capstone projects which you want to put in your cv right those data sets should be really really large so that's what you should take care of and here i would recommend you don't work on problem statements like titanic survival prediction house price prediction so i was working as a hiring manager as well right and i would tell you every second cv of someone trying to get into data science would have this project titanic survival prediction or house price prediction and these projects are not going to help you to stand out in the competition so in your capstone projects you should never do these projects on your cv i should only see industry relevant projects and the data sets should be large that's what you should do so if you follow this 10 step process which i have recommended which starts right from python and ends with the capstone projects on real world data sets i am very confident that you would be successfully be able to transition your career into data science and ai thanks for watching the video and i will see you in the next one bye bye